It is a blessing to be in the house of the Lord today. Thank you, Pastor, and your staff for inviting me to be here this morning. Um, once again, my name is Jules Dophilias. Uh, it's the first time nobody messed it up. Pastor got it right. But if you, even if you had messed it up, I would have been okay because I've been called all kind of names before. And I feel welcome this morning. Loué, loué, gloire à Jésus. Péché mieux effacé. All my sin has been forgiven. Do I El Moody say, I have more trouble with myself than any other man that I have ever met? One of the greatest gifts that God gives every one of us is the gift of choice. However, the gift of choice, there are certain things you are not able to choose from. You are not able to choose who your parents are. You are not able to choose the color of your skin. You are not able to choose where you're from. You are not able to even choose how tall you are. If you are four foot tall, you can wear the high heels, wear the boot like me, you're always going to be four foot tall. But however, there are other things in life that we have to look at. You might not even be able to choose how much money you have because somebody always in control of that. If it's not the government, it's your wife. <laughs> the man like that, huh? But there is one choice me and you can make today is to follow Jesus. Can no one take that away from us? We can choose to follow Jesus. We can choose to be a child of God. We can choose to make a difference in a time where everything is upside down. We can make that choice. As we gather here today, as one nation under God, one nation under God, Paul tells us in Romans chapter 15, verse 6, that together you may with one voice glorify God. The Father and Son, Jesus Christ. Stand up. Give God some praise this morning. Stand up where you are. Give, give him some praise this morning. He is worthy to be praised. With one voice, one nation, one people, we are in our in way to heaven. Give him some praise. He is worthy to be praised this morning. Give him some praise this morning. My subject, also my question to you today, are you willing to work for God? Are you willing to make a difference for God? That's my question to you this morning. Are you willing to share the gospel with your family members? Are you willing to share the gospel with your boss, your friend, your co-workers? Are you willing to bring one of your family members to Christ? As a lot of island people here today, are you willing to go back to your country to share the love of God to your neighbor, to your parents? to the one that you love. Are you willing to do that? Open your Bible with me in Isaiah chapter 6, verse 1 to 8. Isaiah chapter 6, verse 1 to 8. Isaiah chapter 6. In the year of King Israel died, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne, high and lifted up, and the train of his robe filled the temple. Above it stood seraphim, each one of six wings. With two he covered his face, with two he covered his feet, and with two he flew. And one cried to another, say, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And the posts of the door were shaken by the voice of him who cried out. And the house was filled with smoke. I say, whoa, it's me. I am undone because I am a man of unclean lips. I am a man of unclean lips. 
and I dwell in the midst of the people of unclean lips. You see that? Say, For my eyes have seen the king, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphim flew to me, having in his hand a life coal, which he had taken with the tongue from the altar. And he touched my mouth with it and said, Behold, this has touched your lips, your iniquity is taken away, and your sin has purged. Also, I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send? Whom shall I send? And he said, Go and tell the people. Huh? He said, Whom shall I send? And who will go for us? Then I say, Here I am, send me. Can you say that this morning? Say, Here I am, Lord, send me. Can you really say that this morning? Here I am, Lord, send me. Isaiah responds to God calling by saying, here I am, send me. But before he was in a position to respond to God's call, he had to experience, Isaiah had to experience spiritual cleanness. He had to experience that. So, so with us, God will use a large, a small even as misshaped person, but he will not use an unclean person. Are you with me this morning? If you preach with me, we're going to be done in 20 minutes. If not, we're in this for a long one. <laughs> God will not use an unclean person. So before God can send Isaiah, before even Isaiah will say, God, send me, he realized that he is not clean. He realized that the people he surrounded himself with, they are not clean also. But before we can go to work for God, we need to ask ourselves this question. Do I am in the position for the Lord to use me? Yes, he said, oh, I am sent me. But can he really send me? Can he use me? As he said, Lord, send me. I'm ready. But he realized, look, look, I cannot go without you cleaning me. You have to put me in a position to go. This is what the pastor has been doing. Every nation, every person from every part of the world, we bring everybody together. He said, you know what? We're going to feed you the gospel, but you have to go. But before you go, you have to remember that I have to be in a position for the Lord to use me. The urgent need for the work in Luke chapter 10 Verse 2 to 3, then he said to them, the harvest is surely great, but the labors are few. He said, therefore, pray the Lord the harvest to send out labor in his harvest. Go your way. Behold, I send you out as a lamb among the wolves. This morning, my brothers and sisters in Christ, we have a mission. We have a purpose. We have a goal to accomplish. The only thing we have to do is to bring one soul at the time to Christ. Uno mas a Dios. Your nom pour Jésus à la fois. One soul for Christ. One. That's all you got to do. One soul for Christ. You don't have to worry about, I got to bring like 20, 10, 20 people. One. If every one of us here this morning say, you know what? I'm going to bring one soul to Christ. Later on, I'm going to show you what will happen to you when you bring a soul to Christ. One soul at the, at the time. Jesus said, look, I know you are lame. What happens when a wolf, uh, wolf gets to a lamb? It's going to kill it. But you know what? He said, don't worry. I will be with you till the end. I will protect you. I will guide you. But before, you have to be in a good relationship with me for me to protect you. The limit time for, for the walk. There's a limit time for the work. In John chapter 9, verse 4, Jesus said, I must, he said, I must work the work of him who sent me while it is day. It is time now for me and you as a Christian to rise up. We are experiencing something that's never happened before. Every Sunday we come to church, you know, we hug each other, you know, that's the fellowship. That's the biggest ship that have ever built, the fellowship. But you know what? Now we go like this. 
right? Everybody, cover your face. The church is under attack. The church of God, it is under attack. It is time for me and you to rise up to say, you know what? I must preach the gospel of him who sent me. I understand that sometimes. It's not everyone that preached the gospel that God called. Because there, there are some who call, there are some who say, you know what? I can be a pastor. I'm going to become one. Because, you know, there's money in there, right? But there are some also they put in place. But us as the men and women of God, it is time for us to say, you know what? I'm going to preach the gospel while it's day. That's what he said, right? Jesus said, I must walk the work of him who sent me while it's day. The night is coming when no one can walk. There will be a time. Now is your time. If there's any time for us as a Christian to preach the gospel, it is now. Say the same thing as you say, Lord, I am stopping as a lazy Christian. Send me now. Send me. I am ready to, for you to send me. But now we know there are some people who say, God, send me. Then he's going to say, well, I'm going to send you to hear this. Oh, no, 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 not this part of town. Right? There's people right now, there's, there's a lot of Christians right now, you know, say, hey, God say, look, I want to send you to Africa. And you say, Lord, which part of Africa? He said, the worst part of it. He said, no, no, we got to talk about this. Now, God say, look, I am ready. When you say you're ready, that means you're ready for God to send you. We must do the work of him who called us. We must do his work, not the man's work, but his work. In 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1 to 4, look, look, look with me together. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1 to 4. He said, but know this, that in the last day, apparently his time will come for men will love of themselves. We are living in this time right now. Men will love of themselves, love of money. It's not for any reason right now where your life don't mean nothing to some people. As a Christian, our life has no meaning for a lot of people out there. When we gather to worship the Lord, I think we're crazy. But you know what? We are pre prepared for something better. We are prepared for our king. We are prepared for heaven. I don't care if you tell me I'm crazy, but I'm crazy for the Lord. I said, there will be love of money. Boast, proud, blasphemy, disobedience to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanders without self-control. We're living all this thing right now. We experience all this thing right now. And the last part of the verse says, love of pleasure rather than love of God. Where is the love of God? God's children, where is his love? If I ask you this question this morning, how do you share the love of God? How do you share it to your neighbor? How do you share it? Do you know there even wife who don't love their husband? There are husbands who live in a house with their wife, they don't love it. Do you know that? There are people who don't, they don't do that. There's people who are always going to say, I forgive, but I don't forget. You never heard that phrase before? I forgive you, but I don't forget. No, you're not forgiving. Once you forgive, you forgive everything. But my sisters and brothers, this time is now for us to leave all this thing, leave the world behind, but focus on the work of, of God as one nation, as one people. The, there's a blessing for those who work for God. There is a blessing for those who work for God. Jeremiah 31, verse 16. For thy work shall be reward, saith the Lord. If you work for God, God will work for you. It's not for any reason that can fire you from the job. If you work for the Lord, he will protect you. If you work for him, he will do something for you. But you must work for the Lord. Do you know that? What will, do you know what will happen to you when you are for God? Look with me in James. James chapter 5, verse 19 and 20. I'm going to show you why it's so important for you to work for God. What will happen to you? James chapter 5, verse 19 and 20. Paul said, my brothers, if anyone among you Wonder from the truth. If someone bring him back, verse 20, let him know that whoever bring back a sinner from his wandering or from his sin or from the wrath of God 
will save his soul from death and will cover a multitude of sins. With all the sinners like me, it's time to get busy. We are all sinners. Romans 3, 23, we all shut from the glory of God. But James said right there, look, every time we bring a sinner to Christ, a multitude of our sins has been forgiven. So that means you're not doing something where you're not getting any reward. God is a win-win. You work for God, he works for you. You bring a soul to him, he forget a couple of your sins. Some people probably say, no, I don't have that many sins. Oh, yes, you do. Not in this world you live right now. You sin by what you see. You sin by what you talk about. Sometimes we even participate in other people's sins. Because when they send a blasphemy video, you look at it, you smile at it, and you know what you did? You share it. That means you participate in somebody else's sin. So the Bible says, if we bring a soul to Christ, we save one, many of us sin has been forgiven. This is what we got to do. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 50, it said, Therefore, my beloved brother, be steadfast, immovable, always abiding in the work of the Lord. Not in the work of men, in the work of the Lord. Knowing that your labor is not in vain, saith the Lord. If we work for him, our work is not in vain. This is a great atmosphere, all nation. We are not in all dismissed division that's out there. We're not in it. We are going to heaven. I can guarantee you in heaven there will not be black, no white, no yellow, no purple. They'll be a child of God. You know, when we get to heaven, we're going to put all, going to put our voice together, just like this morning. Yes, I am a child of God. What the Son has set free is free indeed. We are to get busy. We are to start right now. In Galatians 6, verse 9, and let us not grow weary while doing the good, for on due season... We shall wait uh, if we do not lose heart. In due season, this is why we must start working right now. If you are in the congregation, you don't know what to do, go talk to your pastor. Say, look, I need to work for the Lord. What can I do? There's always something you can do for God. You might not be able to preach, but you can sweep the floor. I don't care what I have to do for the Lord. As long as I'm working for him, I don't have to be in stage. Get involved. Get involved. Somebody going to a missionary trip. If you can go, see what you can do to support that missionary trip. Just make sure that person who are going to the missionary trip is legit. Okay? I just, that's not going to cost you anything. We got to get involved. We have to start working. We've been sitting down too many times for so long. The church has been sit down. It's not, hey, I'm not involved. No, we have to get involved. The island people, we have to get involved. The community you're coming from, you need to go back, preach the gospel. I don't know where you're from. A lot of us from all over, all over the place. In the town where I'm from in Haiti, a place called Lagunav. 2004, I went back. I started a ministry there with seven people. There was a lot of voodoo stuff in that town. White knife, you go. There was one last one that was in the town. The Lord gave me a vision. I stand in front of the church. I was declared from 50 miles from this church, there should not be any voodoo done. And as of right now, you go back, I give God praise. He's no longer there. And you know what? Most of the people that was doing that was my families. You know what they say? They say, no, we can't do this anymore. No, we have our own child now preaching the word of God. We can't do this, do the thing anymore. We have to make a change. Sometimes, let me tell you this, it's not about how far you can go, but do you make a change in your neighborhood? Do you make a change to your friend? 
We'll spend like two hours, three hours on the phone with people. We never tell them anything about God. We talk about everything that's going on in the world. Do you share the love of God? Do you tell them how much Jesus loved them? Do you tell them, wait, get involved. Let's do something for God. Let's worship him together. Let's serve some soul for him. Serve by grace to faith. But reward by your work. Ephesians 2, from 8, 8 to 10. For by grace you have been saved, where? Through faith. And not that of yourself. It is not of yourself. You don't do nothing for it. We don't deserve to be alive, but Jesus Christ gave his life for us. We don't do nothing for that. It's not because you have money, not because you're educated, not because you, 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 you're a good-looking woman. I'm not going to say good-looking man because we, we know what time we're living in. But it's because somebody paid the price. You are not saved to sit down. You are saved to walk. Somebody bring you to Christ, obviously. Can you bring somebody else to? We have to do the same thing. He said, not, by, he said not, not the work of yourself, it is the gift of God. Not of your works, lest anyone should boast. For we are his workmanship, creating Christ Jesus for good works. We are created for good work. God created us for a purpose. That purpose is to save this world. One by one, we can bring one soul to Christ. One by one. In your high school, young people, you have to make a difference. Don't get involved with the crowd. The, the, the crowd. Don't get involved. Be yourself. Be the person that you've been always been at home. Because I understand that. You know, I have a crazy idea one time, Pastor. Say, so, you know, I would like to go to all the church members' works. You know, have like a... a, a Secret cameras. And two weeks all of them see their action, their attitude. You know? But you know what? I say, I can't do that. But there's one person who can do that. You can, you can think you can run from God, but you cannot hide from him. He can see everything. We must do that. He created us for his own works. While God is prepared beforehand, beforehand that we should walk in them. 1 Corinthians 3.11, for no other foundation can anyone lay than which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Christ set the foundation for us. He set it up. All me and you have to do is keep building on it. Keep building on it. We have to get involved. We've been sitting down for so long. We've been, I can say that as a Christian, we've been ignorant sometimes. You say, you know what? I don't like him. I'm not going to talk to him. No, I don't care if you like me or not. I'm going to preach you the word of God. At my job, I have an email. At my, uh, my signature, I put, Jesus is coming. Are you going? I have it in there for a good eight months. Then the corporate called me and said, you got to take that off. I say, yes, I will. I say, you know what? Somebody get the message. After eight, after eight months, somebody get the message. That's why they call me and say, I got to take it off. So we have to preach the word of God. We have to share the gospel. We have been called. We have been called. The church has been called. Ephesians 4.1, I therefore the prisoner for the Lord urge you to walk in a manner worthy of calling to which you have been called. We have to walk in a manner that I mean, worthy. I know sometimes people say, well, you, you know, the, the flesh is weak, but the spirit is strong. We have to get busy. If you don't remember anything I said to you today, always ask yourself that question. Are you willing to work for God? Are you willing to bring one soul to him? I know, it is hard. We all try to protect our families, our friends. But you know what? We have to get busy, one by one. Don't let the enemy scare you. This is the first time in history the door 
where we can worship God have to shut down. It's the first time. We heard everything happen in the world. The church never closed. But you know what? We got a word for Satan. You can close a building, but you cannot close the church of God. May God bless you. May God protect you. Thank you, Pastor.